Hello everyone, today we are discussing encephalitis which is basically an inflammation of the brain parenchyma. It is often seen with meningitis. It has four main causes, viral, bacterial, fungi and autoimmune causes. We have herpes simplex virus 1, arbovirus, varicella zoster virus, enterovirus and Epstein-Barr virus in the viral etiology. Among the arbovirus, West Nile virus is most prominently associated with encephalitis and enterovirus includes polio. Herpes simplex is the most common sporadic cause of encephalitis while arbovirus is the most common epidemic cause. Listeria, mycobacteria and syphilis are bacteria which also cause encephalitis. In fungi, cryptococcus is a cause and lastly we have anti-NMDA receptor antibodies in autoimmune. Moving on to the complications, there are two S's, seizures and SIADH. The seizures are of focal and generalized nature and SIADH presents as hyponatremia. Clinical manifestations will include an altered mental status with aphasia, ataxia and LMN and UMN lesion in many cases. Myoclonic jerks and tremors may also be present. Cranial nerve involvement will also present with ocular palsy and facial weakness. If the hypothalamic pituitary axis is involved, diabetes insipidus and SIADH will be evident. General symptoms include fever, chills and malaise. If the meninges are involved, nuchal rigidity, photophobia and headache will be seen. How do we diagnose the condition? Clinical exam is never reliable in case of encephalitis. We use MRI or CT and CSF-PCR for confirmation. This here is a MRI T2 showing increased signal in the left temporal lobe. This demonstrates encephalitis. We use PCR for confirmation. Also, a rule of thumb is that if the frontotemporal region is involved in encephalitis, HSV is the culprit. CT is less specific than MRI and if done should be done before LP. Moving on to lab investigations, we have CSF culture, CSF glucose tests, then PCR and antibodies for EBV and West Nile virus. CSF culture is not done nowadays due to decreased sensitivity. HSV has normal glucose while decreased glucose is associated with other causes. PCR is the primary test and antibody de detection is done retrospectively and does not aid in the diagnosis. Then we have tissue analysis. Tzank smear from the base of skin lesion helps in detecting varicella zoster and herpes simplex virus. Brain biopsy reveals cowdery type 1 inclusion bodies and hem hemorrhagic necrosis in herpes simplex virus, varicella zoster virus, cytomegalovirus and herpes simplex virus respectively. EEG will show temporal discharge in, in herpes simplex virus. It's important to differentiate herpes simplex from other viruses because unlike other viruses, herpes simplex has a highly effective therapy if given early. We can do this by keeping these points in mind. Herpes simplex has frontotemporal involvement, olfactory and gustatory hallucinations will be present, anosmia will be seen, then memory disturbances will also be evident, then CSF-PCR will confirm the diagnosis and we will also have focal neurologic findings. This diagnosis summarizes the signs and symptoms we see in herpes simplex encephalitis seizures, altered mental status and headache with fever. Now for the treatment, acyclovir is given as empirical therapy if there is even a suspicion of herpes simplex encephalitis. Then to control the seizures, we can give anticonvulsants while for cytomegalovirus, we give gancyclovir and for retinitis, we give cedofovir. For West Nile virus, no specific therapy is available. Last but not the least, I will outline the differential diagnosis for viral encephalitis as it has been mentioned in Harrison's. They include Hashimoto's 
encephalopathy, Bryant disease, Negleria fowleri, Balamuthia, and Acanthamoeba. Let's have a recap. Encephalitis is most commonly caused by HSV1 and arbovirus, which are respectively the epidemic and sporadic causes. We need to also keep the other causes in mind. Complications include seizures and SIADH. Behavior uh, abnormalities are because of temporal lobe involvement and aphasia and ataxia are also present. SIADH is a complication because of the HPE involvement. MRI T2 is uh, more sensitive than CT. PCR is for confirmation. Frontotemporal will show HSV encephalitis. Then, uh, okay, this was wrong. Uh, CSF glucose will be normal in case of HSV and PCR is the primary test. Zang smear and is done for uh, varicella zoster and herpes simplex. Brain biopsy will show Caudry type 1 inclusion and hemorrhagic necrosis. Hemorrhagic necrosis is specific for herpes simplex. A temporal discharge will be seen in HSV. HSV has effective therapy available uh, and memory disturbances is seen because of temporal lobe involvement. Then seizures, altered sensorium and headache form the triangle. Uh, HSV is treated by acyclovir while CMV is treated with gancyclovir. That will be all. Thank you.